Hello everyone, uh, this is Scott Miller and thank you so much for attending our webinar today, Five uh, Healthy Habits, uh, Five Healthy Demand Generation Habits to Start the New Year. Um, I will be your host and we have uh, Aaron Bedar, the CEO of Sleeves Up, joining us today. Um, and give us just a couple of uh, moments as individuals are signing in. We have a pretty good um, response rate and we wanna give people a couple of minutes to uh, get started with us. So thank you very much. Hold tight. All right, we have a couple more people signing in, and um, you know, Aaron, I think this probably is a good uh, a good way for us to get started, maybe by by way of introduction. And uh, happy New Year to you. Well, thank you. Happy New Year to you as well. Um, are you gonna, are you sharing your screen? Uh, I am. Do you not see my screen? I do not see it yet. All right, we'll give just a people a couple more minutes if that's part of the. You'll have an issue signing in. Got it. All right, sorry about that. Everybody ready to go? Okay, that's pretty good. Um, so, uh, Aaron, again, Happy New Year. We appreciate you joining us today. And just for our listeners, we want to do a, uh, you know, set some some housekeeping rules here and, and just make sure that everybody is uh, on the same page in terms of, you know, what we can do to participate. You know, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, uh, ask them in the, uh, the, the question box in the upper right hand corner. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, we'll try to get them into them as soon as possible. Um, also, uh, we will, of course, have handouts available for anybody uh, that is interested in the slide deck. Um, we have a couple of handouts that are available. One is a, uh, a data sheet already for Sleeves Up and another e-data sheet for, um, for Ramped Up. Um, so uh, we'll also have, for those that are... Uh, uh, that are uh, um, Viewing today, whether this is on a recording or viewing it live, we also have, you know, a, a special gift for those that are viewing in terms of, um, you know, ways to, to work with us if you like what you hear or you have any initiatives going forward. Um, so, without further ado, Aaron, again, uh, welcome, and uh, the, the founder and CEO of Sleeves Up. So, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're up to. Great. Well, uh, happy New Year to you as well, Scott, and to everybody on the call and, and on the webinar. Um, so sleeves up. Um, you know, I have been fortunate in my career to be able to start um, and exit uh, a handful of startups. And uh, you reach a point in your life where you, you start to figure out what do you love to do and, and who do you like to work with and uh, what do you think you're good at doing at the very least. Uh, and that was really the genesis for sleeves up, which is a company that I built to work with small and medium sized companies, um, help them figure out how to you know, look at sales and marketing and, and, and customer success really through the lens of revenue generation. And, you know, Sleeves Up is something that I live daily. I love to jump in and help companies figure out, um, you know, how, how to generate revenue. Really, it's that simple. Um, so I've been doing it now for about six months and working with a handful of clients and you know, being able to experience some of the joys that they see as their sales and marketing engines get going. Sleeves up. Well, I like that. And there you see the guy rolling his sleeves up. I guess that means getting your hands those dirty. Are, those are my very strong arms that you see there. Well. <laughs> see that. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's not stock. Uh, no, it's not, of course. Um, uh, next, a uh, little bit about, you know, the company that uh, I founded, uh, Ramped Up. You know, we are a, an integrated sales and marketing uh, tool for demand generation. 
Um, you know, so customers that are looking to uh, ensure who their uh, their ideal buyers are, you know, going through that process and trying to find the people that work at their buying committee and ensuring that you, you know, have your total addressable market. And then, you know, the right things to say to those folks, because, you know, really, you know, we're going to discuss a little bit about this in our, our call here today. You know, really, you know, uh, sales and marketing automation is, has fallen, you know, under the its own weight. And there really are different ways to communicate and be effective today. And that's really what sales uh, and marketing you know, companies are doing, and that's the reason why Ramped Up is here We're for an account-based selling solution. A little bit about Ramped Up. So, without further ado, you know, we'll get to our five uh, healthy habits. Um, so, speaking directly to the decision maker, now how can we make that into a um, how can we make that into a habit? Keeping the appointment, um, using the news for personalization, uh, finding old customers, uh, and then last but not least, you know, trying to do referrals as a service. So let's just get into it, shall we? Speaking directly to the decision maker. All right, sorry, Aaron, go ahead. No, I was just saying, let's do it. Let's do it, okay. So speaking directly to the decision maker. So Aaron, you know, one of the things that's interesting, you know, as I've grown in, in sales and marketing and moved into leadership and now owning companies is that, you know, I see it from both sides like you do, right? You know, I'm trying to get the decision, the attention of the decision maker in many instances, and, and I am a decision maker, so I get to see it from both sides. And, you know, as, as way of introduction, you and I worked at a, a company called Cynthia. We were both executives, you know, there. And, and we would often, you know, tease, you know, about you know, people trying to get our attention and some of the things that uh, would, would work and some of the things that wouldn't work. I remember in particular that you, you were a big fan of video. Um, are you still a big fan of video getting your attention? I, I am. I, I'm a big fan of, of video because it's different and, you know, you can make it you know, very personal. Um, the, the technologies that are out there today do a great job of providing a platform uh, and, and a vehicle to get, you know, put a different message in front of people. When you, you think about executives or, or any decision maker and, and just how they're bombarded throughout the day with, with emails, um, you know, more emails than ever, uh, you know, as people continue to try to incorporate AI and, and, and other automation um, and, and so anytime you can have a personal touch and, and be different, I think you're going to stand out. And yeah, I mean, I tend to click on things that have my name on it with a, a play button. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so, you know, let's take that and turn that into a habit, right? In terms of, you know, what, what works and how do we know that we can get the attention of the decision maker? So, you know, first and foremost, you know, one of the things that, that you need to consider is that are you spending your time and energy and effort on the right buyer? So we, you, you certainly need to ensure that you go through the deductive process of finding out who your uh, the, the, the proper accounts are that you should be calling on because they look like your customers. And are you calling on somebody that's traditionally been part of the buying committee in some of your previous buys? So that's, that's A1, right? And then when you do find those individuals, are you doing a concerted effort to get their attention? So are you setting up a campaign? And remember, we, we, we used to call those five by five campaigns. And I know that's something that you guys are doing over at Sleeves Up is consulting around demand generation campaigns. What are what are five five campaigns? Yeah. It's five touches in five days, and you know it's it's identifying the right people. You, you hear everything about account based marketing. It's identifying the right people, um, decision makers at the right companies, and getting in front of them and making sure that as you're getting in front of them, you have a compelling reason for them to want to interact with you. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, the five by five, five touches, five days, um, and and it's very effective. And you know, I think the great thing about a, a five by five campaign is that it's you know, there's no such thing as a perfect pitch. There's just the perfect campaign, right? So yep. if you're if you're gonna you know, the, so the five by five, there's three emails and there's two phone calls. So if you're calling somebody, make sure that you are calling them directly. A uh, hundred, as you see here, the statistic, 171 percent more likely to set an appointment when you call directly. That's because you don't have to worry about a gatekeeper, and that's because you don't have to worry about navigating a phone tree. Call directly. Um, and then when, if you are calling the decision maker, you know, one of the things that you really want to do is be prepared, right? And so there's really this rule of three that, um, uh, that, that, that we like to, to institute, and it's really called, you know, so you don't want to spend way too much time, so you over-prepare and you don't make a call, but you don't want to spend too much time because if you get the, um, uh, the, the decision maker on the phone, that this um, uh, that you're unprepared, right? Because you have to 
earn the trust of that decision maker. You have 10 seconds to earn that trust and then you try to keep it throughout the call, right? And so think about this, the first minute you wanna learn about the account. You know, your companies make purchasing decisions because either they're dissatisfied with what they currently have or the pain that they, they have yet to remedy, right? So learn a little bit about the account, learn about their installed technologies, learn a little bit about triggering events. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Minute two, you learn about the buyer. Right, so CEB has stated that the average B2B purchase has about 5.4 decision makers, and most sellers are usually talking to the lowest one on the org chart. Right, so learn about all the buyers, learn about the buying committee, and make sure that you're referencing that buying committee when you're on that call as well to show that the, uh, the decision maker that you're prepared. And then lastly, you wanted to use use cases, right? Um, SAP states that a, a B2B decision maker, you know, is 90% more likely to go with you if they have a uh, a use case uh, as opposed to just a generic value prop. So use a use case. These three things will help you get the attention of the decision maker, okay? Um, and then, you know, moving on to that, you know, think about, you know, Aaron, we talked a little bit about, you know, going into uh, a BDR uh, farm right now or going into, you know, a call center and listening to people trying to, you know, set appointments. And, and one of the most disturbing things is, you know, you don't really hear a lot of talking. Um, yeah. What is your experience when, when you hear that? Yeah, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's crazy. It, yeah, I remember as things were shifting, you know, and people were using more and more email versus cold calling and literally everything but picking up the phone, you, you watch the numbers drop. Um, it, you've got to figure out how to get back in front of people and, and how to start touching people again. And what's cool about the phone is it, it, now it's different, right? No one's doing it. So you're, yeah, I'm finding myself and I, <clears throat> I'd imagine you are too, Scott, you know, picking up phone calls again, you know, cause you're not inundated like you used to be. Phone calls are different. Well, that's right. Um, cool kid. <clears throat> yeah. Now you can't go through the tree, right? You're not going to make it through the, the phone tree, but if you can find a resource that has good direct dials, um, you know, it's, it's another one of those, you know, you're different than everybody else. Absolutely. Right. And I think it's also a, a, a mind shift in, in, in or a shift in your mindset rather. Um, you know, you work, you know, when you pick up the phone and you call a stranger, I mean, you're doing them a, a favor, right? You have to believe that. And this is what this quote by Chris Beale states is that, you know, interrupting someone is not an inherent negative. If you believe that it is, you not only cripple yourself as a seller, but you fail who you might have derived value from, learning the opportunity you failed to let them know about, which is a lot of devil yeah, one, Another point here, you know, and this is, you know, I, I use this all the time. Like, you know, some of my, my favorite moments are when, and this is, you know, coming with the sales and, and marketing DNA that I have, <clears throat> but I love when I download a white paper and, you know, while I'm reading that white paper, I get the phone call from, from the BDR, or the sales rep. I mean, that, I, I, I've chosen that moment in my life to take the time to learn more about something. I don't feel like I'm being interrupted if someone's calling me from that company. In fact, I'm the opposite. I'm, I'm overly impressed and it, it's great timing, right? I'm not in a meeting. I am interested in learning more about your company and you're calling me and you're striking while the iron's hot. So uh, it, it is, I don't even know if I'd call it interrupting. Um, I think you're, you're adding to my experience. And that's the mindset you have to have, right? I mean, you, you might be in the wrong, the wrong line of work if you think it's in any other way. Um, so that's a, those are the, those are some healthy habits, right? So you know, the first one, you know, talk to the decision maker, make sure you're prepared, understand the buying committee, and dial directly, right? And 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 and, and make sure that you uh, commit to a program. You know, there's no such thing as a perfect pitch. There is a perfect campaign. Um, so moving to the next piece, keeping the appointment. All right. So you've made the cold call, you've got the appointment, you've got the decision maker. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than going through all the time, energy, and effort to set an appointment and the decision maker or the person you know, that you have uh, the appointment set up with doesn't show up. Right. And, and you know, that, that really is pervasive. And I think one of the things that, um, that, that reason what the main reason why I believe people don't show up to appointments is because they just said yes to get you off the phone. And I think you and I discussed this in call prep, but do you believe that to be the same as well, Aaron? Oh, uh, they, they, they're nice. They, 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 they feel like they're being nice to you. What they don't realize is that they're, you know, they're really wasting your time. Yeah. I've mean, yeah. seen it over and over and over again, sat in many meetings trying to figure out why are, 
you know, our, our, our conversions from setting appointment to completing the demo would drop off. And a lot of times it was, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about this, but it's the wrong person who's just being nice. Well, that's exactly right. So these are sort of the four steps that, that we look at to uh, make sure that you can keep the appointment, right? So the first one is qualify, qualify, qualify. So as we mentioned to begin with, like make sure you're calling the right people. So if you do set the appointment, that you know, that um, it's worth everybody's time. But not all appointments are created equal, right? There's also inbound appointments. So you want to make sure those folks are are qualified as well, right? That they fit your ideal buyer profile and they fit your buyer persona. Amen to that, right? But the next piece is just qualify over and above just the account and the contact itself, but qualify the individual. You want to ask qualifying, you know, questions in terms of, um, you know, who else should be involved in this process? What are some of the pains that you're experiencing that we might help alleviate? You know, make sure that a you're bringing value, so you're seeing you're seeing more of a uh, as a uh, as a consultant as opposed to uh, an appointment setter. But over and above that, you know, you're bringing value. And you're qualifying that person to come in. The next piece, right, is the multiple. And Scott, before you before you move on to that, I think it's also important for people to know that, you know, by asking to bring other people that that are going to be part of the process, um, you know, some people might look at that as, uh, um, you know, a turnoff. Like I don't want to have to ask these guys questions, or they're they're not, they they don't feel like it's appropriate to ask. It, it's the complete opposite. I mean, it shows that you know what you're doing as a rep. By making sure that you're you're setting things up properly, right? The, these guys are going to go on this journey with you, and the fact that you're setting the stage properly for them is, um, you know, is always, from what I've seen, you know, taken as a very as a positive, and it also gives you a chance to shake out the ones that don't want to be there. Uh, absolutely, right. Uh, that's the uh, that's the idea, and then you also get to build value. So if you've already researched the buying committee when you're setting the appointment, you get to reference that buying committee when you ask for yeah. multiple attendees. So if you're talking to the VP of sales, mention the VP of marketing or the VP of sales operations, if you sell or, or, or IT or HR, mention them by name and ask if you should invite them, right? Make it easy to say. Um, another great trick though, that, that, that uh, we institute here at Ramped Up, and I know this is uh, uh, you know something that we did over at Cynthia uh, as well, is that ask them for your phone number, their direct dial phone number if you don't have it. And if you have permission to call them, if things, um, uh, for whatever reason, you know, might slip on their calendar. They'll say yes 100% of the time. And if they don't, they qualify themselves out. And we'll tell you a little bit later why that's important, right? Qualify, multiply, do those steps, right? Next, make it easy, right? Uh, this should go without saying, but, you know, send a calendar invite, you know, remind on a calendar invite, and also have a, a dial-in number. Now, there's a little bit of controversy, I think, out there in terms of do I dial the person directly so that I can catch them? Or do I give a dial-in number and wait? You know, I mean, I think that the jury's in when it comes to giving a dial-in number because that way you give a large window, right, for someone to dial into. Um, you know, the uh, the argument for dialing them directly is that you know you you can catch them you know without have, making them do anything proactive, but you know the the the, um, the chances are that you'll catch them if they weren't going to uh, dial in anyway versus giving them a dial-in. It's just not worth it. Um, and then also, you know, depending on your audience, be careful with, you know, free tools, you know, some uh, some Google Hangouts, which is getting a lot better, or Skype, which is getting a lot better, but not everybody appreciates that, right? So make sure that, you know, you, you if you're going to invest in a web conference, use the web conference. Yeah, um, I agree. And provide an agenda. I know this is a big idea as well. I mean, sh this is what we're going to talk about, right? And these are who we're going to, this is what who we're bringing to the meeting, and this is what we're going to talk about. If there's anything you'd like to add, please let me know. Make it foolproof. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's um, a great, I mean, that's something that not many people do, but everybody wants to know what they're getting into, provide the agenda, and then reiterate the agenda at the beginning of the meeting. Absolutely, right? Um, stay top of mind afterwards, right? So once, you know, once you've set the appointment, stay top of mind. LinkedIn with them, you know, make sure you do that, show that you're a real person. Email them the day before, email them an hour before, and then if they don't show, because inevitably that, that's going to happen, right? You've already got their, email, uh, their personal um, uh, phone number, the direct dial phone number, the call and remind them and you have permission to do that. So take it. So do that as well, right? Um, and then post-mortem. So we were big on this over at Cynthia, Aaron. If you want to share a little bit about what post-mortem is and so that you can you know, see where some of the trends are in, in either get, getting the attention of the decision maker or, or missing those appointments altogether. Yeah, I mean, I think 
getting the attention is, is critical, right? And then reiterating that what you covered and, and making sure you have next steps is, is the most important thing you can do. Uh, and then I think, you know, making sure that you're you're disqualifying people as well um, after. And, you know, if someone misses a meeting, you want to know why. If, if things go well, you want to know why. Uh, it, it's definitely worth taking the time to understand, um, you know, what goes well and what doesn't go well. And then sharing those experiences with other people on your team, with your manager. Yeah, um, you know, the more eyeballs you have on how things went, you know, the more effective you're going to be. Yeah. You know, and a lot of these best practices we had was just doing a, a post-mortem, right? I mean, the agenda yep. piece, ensuring that you have, you know, multiple people on the call. I mean, you know, I'm sure you'll find that yourself, right? Yep. So, again, and every he, sales cycle is a little different. So, you know, tracking what works and what doesn't work is, is important, you know, you know, so that you get the data to, to review. And, you know, don't just take it from us, right? The SVP of sales... Uh, for strategy at Sales Loft, you know, he's a big believer in qualification, right? So I can better prepare. What are you looking for to get from this meeting and prepping for a meeting, anything specific you'd like to cover, right? And so, you know, inevitably when people miss a meeting, you know, there, there could be any reason for it, right? It could be because of weather. It could be because of a holiday. It could be because of a special event. It could be from a time zone mix up. Try to uh, investigate if that's one of those reasons. And and then share that and also remind the person, you know, why they decided to take the appointment with you to begin with when you do your follow up. OK, I think weaving in why people are excited about your company and every communication is, is critical, reminding them of why they like you. Right. So someone's taking an appointment. Right. Um, and then you want to you know, understand a little bit more about how you can personalize you know, your conversation you know, with these folks or even setting the appointment. Right. Um, you know, I'm a big, big believer in, in what we call um, triggering events, right? And what, what a triggering event really is, is is a macro event that happens, you know, not as, not at the, the at the director level or the VP level, or sometimes not even at the C level, right? It is something that is influencing the entire company. It is an enterprise action, right? And it is such a big deal that you will find out what's happening about that uh, account in the news. So you use the news. Right. So here's some examples of using the news for personalization. So, again, enterprise level event that is advertised, right, whether it's the company that's advertising it or they're in the news for reasons that they don't want to be in the news. And then you find how your company can help towards that, either alleviate or amplify what is going on with the uh, that, that news headline. And that's your reason for the call. Right. And so here's some good examples about this. Right. Partnerships, joint joint ventures. Um, mergers and acquisitions, you know, I think there's a, you know, one of the best lines I ever heard about a, a merger and acquisition is that it's like Noah's Ark, right? There's two of everything around there. And so people are, you know, living, uh, looking to set their new agendas, right? Um, how about legal issues? You know, it's, uh, if you can figure out why someone's in the news and for the wrong reasons, right, for legal action, and you can help alleviate that or share the, share with your shareholders or, or the internal stakeholders about ways that you can alleviate that, uh, that pain that comes with legal action, you're going to get to the top of the stack, right? Um, events, I think, Aaron, is one that, that uh, we used a lot and that, and that you know, you speak to your customers about as well, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at events, um, everybody pushes out press releases. You know, right now there are user conferences that are, um, you know, taking place all over the world uh, and, and in every industry you can imagine, people are willing to share, you know, what they're working on and what they're what they're driving towards. And there are you know, every company feels like this is when they need to put out press releases. So you can certainly learn a lot about them, uh, even with sales kickoffs right now. I mean, everybody is having their sales kickoff. They're 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 broadcasting what they're doing. So it's very easy to grab that information um, and then utilize it, uh, you know, while you're at the conference. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we received it, or we learned about this 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 phenomenon from Craig Elias called shift selling, right? And and to Aaron's point, you know, what Craig was saying about triggering events or shift selling is that you know, you've been told for years there's no silver bullet in sales, but there is, and it's called timing. Getting in front of the right person at exactly the right time when you have the right is the right timing, and the sale can almost close itself, right? And so what Craig would talk about when you're looking at trigger events really are you know the three Ps: people product and places, 
right? So as an example, people, right? If a new VP of sales will spend on average a million dollars in new initiatives within the first three to six months, that's a good time to be there, right? New products need new revenue. They need new, um, uh, they need PR, right? And then places, you know, one of the things that's been really interesting in our sales and marketing arena is the GDPR. And, you know, that was a, uh, you know, a tool that, you know, we've been able to, you know, build products and build mindshare around just because of the general data protection regulation that's coming out of Europe. Um, product, people, and places in terms of using the news for personalization. Um, and here's just an example of what that might look like, right? Um, I saw that Comscore, as an example, was in the news recently. You know, we work with companies like Nielsen in the publishing industry. Again, large uh, enterprise level issues, referencing, you know, showing your homework that you've done. And there's a lot more of these quote unquote icebreakers that we can bring to bear as well. Using the news for personalization. Yeah, I mean, it's personalization and it's relevant, which is it's perfect. Um, you know, as we start to round out, you know, some of our, our, our you know, the, our five healthy habits, um, you know, the fourth healthy habit for the new year is, you know, finding old customers at new companies. And I know this this was such a passion for us at our previous company, Aaron, that you know, we turned it into a product. So do you want to share a little bit about you know why this is so important as a new healthy habit for the new year? Yeah, I mean, this, this one, if you can take anything away uh, or if you can only take one thing away today, this is why I would grab to. I mean, people, you know, people and you, you mentioned a minute ago, when, when someone changes a job to go from one place to another, they they bring their stack, right? They, they bring what they've been successful with in the past, what they're comfortable with. Uh, and I remember, you know, even in the first year of, of Social One, Two, Three, and Cynthia, we we had people that you know, made buying decisions. They had a good experience. Uh, they left. They went to other companies. We didn't even know that they left, and they were calling us saying, "Hey, I just landed over here, and I need to get Social One, Two, Three set up." Uh, and we started to see that we were actually we were floored by it. To where we, like you mentioned a minute ago, we ended up turning it into a uh, to a product. Um, but it, I mean, it's, it's, it's common sense, right? They, they like you, they ended up somewhere else. Either they have a competitive version of what, what you have, uh, or, or they need to add something to the tools that they need to be successful. Um, so as long as you take care of your customers, I think we'll get into that in the next couple of slides. Um, they'll bring you with them. Now being able to be proactive and know that they landed somewhere, it takes three months for them to get settled. To your point, the average VP of sales is going to invest a million dollars. You know, those are things that you need to be strategic around. But you know, definitely stay in touch and keep an eye on where your your champions are. Yeah, and, and you know, the what we learned in, is one of the things that we would certainly recommend in terms of taking inventory of your customer base, right? I mean, you know, take them out of product, put it into you know, marketing, and understand who your customers and who your users are, right? Including all your former users. And then you want to segment. These are my current users and these are my former users, right? As we understand those two. And now you've got a list, right? Run a health analysis. You know, we can help with that. There's other people that we know that can run a, a, a check to understand, you know, who the old and identify who the old customers are. And, you know, that's where where uh, bad news is good news, right? If your customer has moved along and you've identified that and you know where they've gone to, then we can help them unpack. We'll share a little bit of what that looks like. Um and, you know, when you do find that you – and once you segment and you understand who your current customers are, ask them for information that transcends a job, right? Ask them for information uh, such as a personal uh, cell phone number or a personal email address, social data, right? Um, and then, you know, if you're just an individual contributor, you know, why don't you, you know, connect with all of your users on LinkedIn and you'll be notified of job changes, Right? This is how we do something like this, right? This is a, you know, this is a great way to build um, a, a loyal fan base, right? And then, you know, talk about a little bit about the Help Them Unpack campaign. You know, think about if um, if somebody can recognize or if a company can recognize through brand, you know, in, the, in stressing brand loyalty. You know, when you go to a new company, you know, they want to be recognized, they want to be appreciated. Um, you know, when you help write them, help them uncap, uh, unpack campaign. You know, remind them again why they chose to do business with you in the first place. This has to be specific, right? You don't really want to make this a big blast campaign. And then you want to give them uh, a time-limited offer, right, as a show of appreciation to come back and make it easy. 
Um, any last thoughts about old customer, new company, Aaron? No, I just I would say make sure you know where they are. Um, make sure you know where your fans are. Make sure and you know. Don't be like us. Wait for them to reach out to you. You should be proactively reaching out to them. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, and then you know, lastly, you know, trying to turn referrals as a service. So you know, as as Aaron and I have started to prepare for this. Uh, presentation, you know, the thing that just kept on bubbling to the top in terms of, you know, what just drew our attention was this concept of referrals, right? And, and Aaron, maybe you can share a little bit about, you know, why we're, you know, activating your customer base is so important, especially as we see some of the trends in sales and marketing today. I think, Scott, a lot of it has to do with you know, just how we're trained to to buy things today. What, you know, and this is, you know, everyone shops online um, and, and it's all about rate, like, People want to buy what other people say either works or what they're comfortable with. Um, you know, it, there's not a day that goes by today where I don't see somebody asking a question on on Facebook or, or one of the other social networks looking for advice. Um, you know, the ability for you to take somebody that is a fan of yours um, and turn them into, you know, give them the loudspeaker to share with their friends that you know they're, you're doing something great for them. I think is is, is a lot more achievable today than it had been in the past. People are used to writing reviews. People are used to reaching out to their friends and telling them about something that they, that they like. Um, activating those people is, I think, a lot easier than, than, than most think. And I think people are a lot more willing than, than you, you might think. So you know, your customers with the, with the best net promoter scores or, 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 or the best um, – you know, the people that, that are having the best experience, I think, are willing to do some work for you. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, and I really, when I when you look back at, you know, whether you're raising money or trying to win new customers or launching new products or building new products, it's always about getting the right people around the table that, you know, that that understand what you do, that, you know, that, that like what you do, and they're always willing to tell their friends. And that's where some of the best business comes from. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think, you know, when you, th when you want to um, formalize the process and look at, you know, at your, your customer base as just another lead generation engine, right? I mean, we have all the different ways of, uh, of, of trying to you know, drive leads into the business. This should be just like any other type of vehicle, right? Set up KPIs on what you expect to do. Have a referral portal that you can drive individuals to. I know there's a couple of companies out there like Influitive you know, that provide um, referral portals. Provide a referral bonus, or if I'm not a bonus, I think some other ideas that we talked about were um, uh, rewards programs, right? Aaron and charities that you might be yeah. able to, to um, put there, I think you, you, it's, there, there are a lot of different ways to thank people for, for, for providing them with their time and energy and you know, different companies have different rules and different people have different preferences, but you know, you find a way to say thank you. And I think once you say thank you, which a lot of people don't, you'll find that they'll continue to, to help you. People, you know, generally want to be helpful to companies and people that are helping them. Right. And that even is pre-sale, right? So, I mean, think about, you know, it's the next step here, make it part of your sales process. You know, if you are uh, on your first call, you know, ask someone if you can think of anybody else within your organization that would be a good fit, right? Referral yep. inside your organization. And we talked a little bit about that in setting the call. In the presentation. Yeah, that's striking, striking while they are in hot, like when people are most passionate about you asking for, for the most, right? Things fade over time. So when you've got that enthusiasm, that excitement, you make the request. Exactly. And look at, you know, let's say that the, the, the presentation went well or the presentation didn't go well, right? You know, you ask at that point in time when the iron's hot, can you think of anyone within your anyone else within your network that this would be a good fit for, right? Yep. And then, like even in the negotiation process, so you know, this this uh, procurement person or this CFO or this decision maker wants a 10% discount, right? Well, yep. you know, put some skin in the game, right? I mean, make, can you can you commit to you know five referrals for me in a use case, right? So that's making it part of the sales process. Um, and then lastly, activating your customer base. So, uh, you know, one of the things that, that really piqued our interest about, th about activating the customer base is that concept of asking a customer 
how satisfied they are on the MPS score guidelines, which is one through 10, right? On a scale of one being the lowest and 10, you'd recommend us to friends and family. How do you, how do you feel about our service? Well, you know, if you don't really get a nine or a 10, you feel as though you've done a bad job, but you know, think about what that person, that, that user did when they clicked a nine or a 10. What did they say to us, right? They told us they would refer us to a friend or family member. Well, you know, don't just wrap that up in, in a customer satisfaction survey and use it on your next quarterly board meeting, right? Exactly. Turn that information into something. Ask that person to give you a use case. Ask that person to populate that use to, to populate that use case, right? And on social media um, or internally, and ask that person for referrals, right? Yeah. Turn those nines and tens into referrals, right? Yeah, and I bet everybody on this call today um, or, or listening to this recording could go find 10 high NPS scores uh, and reach out to them and, and get, you know, three or four referrals from each of them. And, and really nobody's doing it today. Exactly, right? And I know one of our um, employees over at Cynthia, one of the things that they would often do to look for referrals is that they would just take their most active users, right? If someone yep. can beat the system up the way that you're beating it up, with or without an NPS score, you obviously are a super user. So ask your super users as well, right? Yep. That's, that's, that's activating your customer base. And, and, and the real reason why you should look to activate your customer base is because, as we discussed before, traditional sales and marketing techniques are failing, right? Um, as, no, they're not, act, they're not uh, as responsive as they once were before. And people are looking to digital and people are looking to intent to try to make up the gap, right? And, you know, there, it's just like a, you know, any type of, um, uh, any, any type of uh, a, a bug or strain, right? It builds up resistance and, and our buyers build up resistance, but referrals don't, right? They withstand the test of time, as you can see here. You know, people are four times more likely to buy a product when it's referred to them. And 83% uh, of satisfied customers are willing to refer your company, their peers, right? So activate your customer base, right? So that will conclude our uh, our presentation today, the, the five healthy demand generation habits. Um, so uh, Aaron, what are some of the things that uh, we would like to um, um, provide to some of the attendees that the Sleeves Up can help? I know that we discussed the 11 point program, but in particular, I think you might be able to help, you know, with some of these programs, you know, in terms of a, a consulting or a diagnostic engagement, correct? Okay. Um, and of course, you know, from a uh, sales and right, marketing. My, my phone was off there. I apologize. So, um, yeah, anybody that's interested in, you know, having us take a look at what they're doing today and, and looking for, you know, easy, I think, low hanging fruit or ways to, um, you know, to generate leads just by, by honestly, oftentimes, Scott, using what they already have, um, you'd know, be happy to help. So. And, you know, from a, a technology standpoint, you know, we can do the same, right? You know, yeah. take a look at, you know, the, our five uh, healthy habits, right? Speaking directly to the decision maker. Now, we can help customers with uh, pen direct dials or find direct dials or find decision makers or, or do a diagnostic to understand who their ideal customer profile is. Um, using the news for personalization, you know, we provide triggering events and icebreaker framework. Finding old customers, you know, we can identify old customers. Uh, and you know, let you know where these people have have gone to, right? So, look to us to help you with any of that information. Great. Right. Um, all right. So, Aaron, without any further ado, um, I think that will close it for me. Any parting? Excellent. No, I just uh, thank thank you, Scott, for um, letting me attend and and participate. And thanks uh, to everybody for spending uh, this past thirty minutes with us. All right. We appreciate that. Thank you guys very much.